These great rivers are home to more than two million people. Some use it as their livelihood. Bring out the fish and we'll measure it on this. Some use it for research. Some like it for fun. And there are many who feel a deep connection to this land. But over the past decade or so, the great Murray and Darling rivers have struggled to survive. In the mid-2000s, Australia was going through one of the worst droughts ever recorded. For hundreds of thousands of farmers, the only way to get water for their crops or livestock was to take it from the rivers in the Murray-Darling Basin. That's this massive area, covering more than a million square kilometres, with at least 77,000 k's of river. It's also Australia's most important agricultural region, because around a third of our national food supply comes from the farms here. But while farmers were taking water from the river, there wasn't enough going back in to help it survive. And some areas started to get really sick. So in 2007, the federal government created a new group called the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. Its main job was to create a plan that made sure people weren't taking too much water out of the river. And it had to get all the states involved to agree. Because what happens at one end of the river makes a huge difference to the other end. After years of discussions and research, the Murray-Darling Basin Plan was finally signed in 2012. A big part of it was that the government was going to pay farmers to put water from their dams back into the river. It also introduced limits on how much farmers could take, especially during times when the river levels were low. All up, the government put $30 billion into the plan. But five years on, a lot of people reckon it isn't going as well as expected. The ABC's Four Corners program recently discovered that certain cotton farms are taking way more water than they should. See, growing cotton requires a lot of water. Like, a lot. And while these irrigation pipes have counters to measure how much water is being sucked up, it turns out that many of the counters aren't working. So they haven't been recording how much water is actually being taken and experts think this was done on purpose. That made a lot of people really angry because at the same time, these people downstream in the town of Broken Hill almost ran out of water. When the river's low and there's no water, there's a sickness that engulfs the whole community. Everyone's fighting against one another, there's arguments going on. Some people have accused the New South Wales government of not following the Basin Plan or not doing enough to enforce its laws. The Basin Authority says their plan was created for a reason and that everyone needs to do their part to make sure that millions of Australians can continue to call these great rivers home. <laughs>